This is a Guide Your Light Network production, creating podcasts with purpose. My name is Kiani Mills, and this podcast is created to help you, to help you see, feel, and experience the human side of business. I'm a business owner, an entrepreneur, and a parent. And like many who have traveled this path before me, I've been through the lows of the lows and the gut-wrenching pain, but I've been through the triumphs and the wins and the indescribable highs, all of which I consider to be my lessons in the school of life. On this show, we are going to start some conversations to ignite ignite new world world ideas ideas into some very old age businesses. So if you're a leader, a business mind or an entrepreneur, get ready to think, act and feel differently so that we can all reach a new level of business success together. So what are you waiting for? Welcome back to this week's episode of She Can Humanize Business, where we enjoy having chats not only about business, but about life. And I really love to bring on not only my friends, but amazing humans out in the industries who are bringing the human element into business and embodying that in their lives. So I am very, very honored to introduce Braith Banken today because him and I have a really beautiful history. And I'm sure we'll go into that soon enough, but thank you so much for joining me today. Oh, uh, Kiani, you know, it's a pleasure to be with you. Anything that you do is just a joy to be part of. And, you know, I'm so grateful that you reached out and said, let's do a show together. You know, the problem's going to be, Kiani, you and I can talk a lot. We're gonna, we're gonna, <laughs> Shutting us up. Yes. Yeah, we're going to have to put a time limit on ourselves. So. Oh, I love it so much. And even the beauty in you saying, um, you know, you like being in my space because, you know, I am the human I am. Yeah. by coming into your space and being <laughs> first. So B and I was a massive foundational part of, of me as a human, as a business owner and as an individual. And, and Braith was really like a beautiful guiding light for me. Through <laughs> he saw something in me before I saw it and gave me a nice little kick up the ass. And <laughs> Did I? I don't remember that. <laughs> I just remember you being fully formed. No, I, I, I do remember the beginning. I remember oh I've seen the evolution of Keanu Mills over the years. I've loved seeing your journey as an amazing human yeah thank you so much I will never forget the first time we sat down in the cafe right next to my office because oh, yes, I remember a conversation it. around me yeah. becoming a director yeah. and I'll never forget that um one of the things you said to me which I've mentioned a couple of times recently was God, Kiani, life is not linear oh yes I did and I was that. like oh of course it's not (laughs) and then the other thing you said I can't remember the conversation or the story you were telling but what you said off the back of the story and it was someone giving you praise and you were like my my ego really liked that I was like you're allowed to enjoy it (laughs) yeah you're allowed of course we've all got an ego you're allowed to love it and I was like instantly changed the way that I viewed it oh that's so cool and you know I you know, I, you, as you know I've done a lot of work in you know meditation and you know I've got a spiritual side to myself and you know I, I understand the ego but it's like you know get it fed in a resourceful way and that's all good right 100 percent. that acknowledgement that the ego doesn't need to die in order for us oh. to be a good human we just need to learn to harness it and, yeah. and get the nourishment it needs as you said and yeah. and let it do its thing because it does it does support us in some way or another well it's part of the human condition to have an ego right so you can't mm-hmm. deny that it's it's what makes us um fabulous in our flawedness <laughs> fabulously flawed <laughs> But look, I am going to start before I forget and get too excited. Can you please answer the question of what does humanizing business mean to you? Uh, I just, I I love that you have a show about this and I'm all about being connected in a disconnected world because these days the world has become such a crazy place. Like I've, I've been working since the 80s. I remember when fax machines were new. So, you know, we thought back then that fax machines were going to change the world and we were going to have all this leisure time. But, you know, the opposites happen and, and the world's got crazier. And the way technology has crept into our world has made us even more disconnected as human beings. And there's a, that's a whole conversation that we could go down that path if you'd like. But, you know, my, my background is organisational psychology and I watch 
um, people these days uh, in, in cafes are going to cafes or sit on trams and I just watch everyone with their head stuck into their device and humans are so pre-programmed to connect with each other it's like the innate part of us and so many people I know and see who are disconnected to their their world you know I say to them how much time do you spend on your device how much time do you talk to your friends? How much time do you, who picks up the phone these days, Kenny? I mean, you and I do, but like how many people pick up the phone just to say, hey, how are you? Like I, I rang somebody a couple of weeks ago and, and I hadn't, you know, he's not a close friend, but I just rang because I saw something on, on Instagram and I wanted to chat to him about it. <laughs> he said, what's wrong? What's wrong? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, you're right. Mate, I'm just giving you a call because I wanted to say hey. <laughs> wow, that's so true. Yeah. We only think that the phone rings when something's wrong. I know, right? Or, or someone wants something. Yeah, exa oh, exactly. You know, because because we're so disconnected. So humanizing business really is about connecting people formally because connection to me is the whole purpose of our existence. You know, love, love sits behind that. Love's a dirty word in business, but have you ever read the book by Steve Farber, um, Love in Business? No. Oh, it's a really cool This is the book. second amazing book you've given me today. I'm like, I think every time we speak, I've got a good one for you. <laughs> yeah, so Steve Farber talks about love in business. And it's not words that we often see associated with, with business because business is tough, business is hard, you know, all of that sort of narrative for a lot of people. But really, you know, you're in business because you want to do good stuff, right? And what's yeah. the foundation of good stuff? It's love. So... Mm -hmm. Oh, I love that so much. They didn't think we'd be talking about love on your podcast, oh, Kiyami. This is everything that I want to talk about. I always want to talk about love. I'm so uh, of excited you that do. you out of everybody has brought it up as a topic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Oh, no, that's amazing. And you're so right because we do. We have this pre-programmed disposition that in order to be in business, in order to be successful, we're going to lead into talking about being busy. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Well, you know, I was telling you off air before we came on today that I'm writing my new book, Busting the Busy Myth, which I'm super excited about. Mm -hmm. But for the last four or five years, I've just been documenting what I've seen around me with all the successful business people I get to hang out with. And like, I love just learning from other people because, you know, why go invent it for yourself when somebody's already done it? It's like, you know, there's nothing new in the world. There's just, you know, different ways of playing the game. So I've been documenting all this stuff. And one of the things that I've really noticed from people I consider to be super successful, very happy and very balanced is they never use the word busy. Because busy has this connotation, like, like busy sounds like an agitated word, right? Mm -hmm. It creates or be in defense. Yeah, it's defensive, it's agitated, it's a, it's an icky word. And the body brain feedback loop really takes picks up on the language that we use. So if we use words like busy, the synaptic connections in your brain. Uh, forming little uh, neural networks telling your brain that you are busy and busy means agitated, anxious, hurried, harried, all of that sort of stuff. So you're, you're reinforcing this constant uh, neg low energy negative feeling, which over time builds up in the vagus nerve, which runs throughout entire body, goes, oh, well, he's anxious. So therefore, I must be in fight or flight because I'm not resting because I'm you know anxious which is caused by the word busy mm -hmm. and it's just this complete feedback and the the body is absolutely a representation of what's going on in your mind your mind's the biggest organ in your body and it's telling everything else how to behave right yeah that's so interesting and look I mean as a keynote speaker and you mentioned that being up on stage or being in a position of leadership and running with a mindset of being busy, mm -hmm. how much productivity could we actually get from being in that state? I know. But you know what I find amazing? Uh, when I say, when I bring this topic up and I'm on stage and I see people, sort of audience reactions, you see this light bulb moment. They go, oh, my God, I'm guilty of that. You know that's what they're saying. You just know it. And they're like, ah. Oh. And think about when you're a kid. I don't know about when you're a kid, but if your parents said to you, or you asked for something and you said, I'm too busy, like what's the takeaway from that? I'm not important enough, right? Mm. So as an adult, it's no different. 
Mm-hmm. Somebody, if I said to you, Keanu, let's have a chat because I'm too busy, both. Well, oh, well, I'm not important in Keanu's world. It's yeah. my takeaway. And you do that over and over again. And eventually I start stop coming to you. And therefore the relationship doesn't continue. Mm. But the, the really challenging part about that is that opportunities then don't come your way. Because mm. if you keep pushing people away with the busy bullshit, you're effectively putting a, a barrier around you. And so I've seen the successful people in my world just don't do that because they know that something may come to them from any interaction that they have with somebody that's uh, approaching them. So they just don't shut people down. Absolutely. And like put it in the context of what you do for work and what we all do for work. Doesn't matter. We don't know who we're talking to or who we're interacting with. So if the first words out of your mouth when someone says, how are you? And you go, oh, I'm so busy. Oh, don't you just like, I just look at people that say, I don't even engage with it anymore. I just say, oh, sometimes I'm quite snide and go, well, that must be exhausting. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure I've said that to you and that's been the response. <laughs> <laughs> We're all there to, to grow and, and find yeah. opportunities and have new connections and, and, and bring in new clients. And if you tell someone you're busy, they're not going to want to give you give you work because they're going to think you can't handle yeah. it. Well, you know, going back to B&I, when I, when I really started to work this out was before COVID, the C word, we call it the mm-hmm. C word, mm-hmm. uh, a lot of tradies were just crazy with a lot of work going on. There was a lot of building work in Melbourne and a lot of them kept on saying, I'm too busy to take on any more work. And it started to dawn on me that, those people, and I can see them saying that, uh, and they were always agitated people. They were really agitated people. And guess what happened when COVID came? Those people instantly had their businesses stop. They were like, here today, gone tomorrow. But the people that had consistency and didn't use that narrative to describe how they were, they're still here today, right? And they're doing really, really well. So creating leaders for our future, and we're looking at, at leadership you know, as a topic, how do you feel as though leaders of tomorrow could benefit from maybe reassessing things a little bit or getting rid of some of the bullshit or mm-hmm. where would your kind of uh, tips and tricks come from to encourage our leaders? I've got so many things to say on that topic because I see this all the time because I've seen young people come into BNI. I, you know, when I'm out presenting and I'm uh, presenting with audiences of the younger, I get a different reaction to the audiences that are more mature. And it's really fascinating to see what triggers them. But, you know, I think people don't pause enough. Pausing mm-hmm. is really important. And before we got on air, I was talking about the model that I have around uh life and I call it purpose intention and connection which is my version of vision mission and values and when you have that sort of stuff figured out and you can't do that in you know a five minute sit down on the phone thing that's something that you've got to work on over time when you have that foundation you can make decisions really easily but you have to stop and pause and breathe and you know I love to breathe (laughs) yes yeah, so, you know, when I wrote my book about breath work, you know, people came up to me all the time and they're going, oh, my gosh, it's so easy to do and it really helped clear my mind. It's like the most basic thing in the world, but people don't do it. But You, know, you don't stop. know what you don't know, hey? I know, right? Stop, breathe, give yourself a mind break and it, stuff comes to you. So leaders of up and coming uh, take the pause mm-hmm have some time to yourself and think about what really, really matters to you. If you haven't got your values sorted out, everything's going to be tough. Yeah, isn't that so true? And we can see again, you know, yes, it's mindset, but also too, if if our values are in one direction and we're growing a business in a different direction, we're just literally going to be pushing shit up hell 24 Yeah, because life's about, you know, problems coming to you and you're solving them, right? So that's what business does. So you solve problems that come to you. And if you know what's important to you, if you know what your values are, it makes yes or no a really easy, easy way to respond because you don't need to sleep on it. You know, that's in line with my values or it's not. End of story. And no one's going to be offended. Yeah, amazing. So let's go deeper into the triangle so that we can actually have a look at how we would put a 
proposition or a yep. decision in business, how would we put it into the framework? So I'm glad you said business, but I also want your audience to think about this in the context of their life as well, because it can, you know, multifaceted, you can, see, absolutely. humanizing I business. It. I know. It's like, well, you know, business is about humans, isn't it? Mm-hmm. So purpose is, the, is at the top. So if you know the purpose, you know what, where you're going to go, where you want to take your business, where you want to take your life, you really have invested some time in understanding what's important to you. So when you're purposeful, it's very uplifting to do stuff that's purposeful. Mm-hmm. So I know your business journey and I know that you you know, are, are diverging and you're growing your, your Kiani empire. It's really great to see you doing stuff that's really purposeful for you and I know that this sort of stuff fills your cup up. So that's really gratifying because life's too short to do stuff you don't want to do, right? It's just... I mean, look, caveat, we will always have to do things we don't want to do, but... Oh, yeah, but not on the macro level. bigger. Yeah. Yeah. Macro level, absolutely. I have to do my taxes every now and then. I have to do my... You know, all of that. you got to do stuff like that, of course. But there's no point in doing a job or a business that doesn't, you know, take you in the direction you want to do. Mm. So, yes, on a macro level you got to face it. On a micro level, we've all got to do stuff we don't want to do. So then it's intention. Where, how do you want to get to that place? What's the intention that you're bringing to every interaction? So, you know, intention is a really good decider for me as to whether or not somebody is credible. Because I can forgive a lot of stuff if I know that their intention is great. Mm-hmm. And when I understand that someone's intention is to move forward in a really positive and constructive way, I don't get grumpy if they misfire because because pe- we're all humans, right? But if I feel your intention is off, I will like that's you're going to underline under your name and that's the end of that. So, you know, and you can feel when people are not intentional and they're not purposeful. Mm-hmm. But the final part is really important. And this is what I would say uh, really helped me to really understand what made me tick and that's understanding value so i say to people you can google this you don't need this is not a hard thing to do you can google give give me a whole pile of different values and sit down there's a lot of ways you can play this game but just google all the words and just sit down and go which ones resonate with me and you know i ended up with a list of about 15 words and i say pick three words out of your 15 or 20 that absolutely symbolize what it may, it, what, what makes you tick. So for me, mine's freedom, connection, and family. So mm. they're my three, and I love those. And because, and you know me well, and I reckon you'd probably say that's me, right? Yeah, perfect. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because you can see that those values are very aligned with the person that I am. Mm. So when you really nailed your values and you're intentional and purposeful, it's the holy it's the holy grail. It really is the, a great way to um, move yourself forward. And when you've got all of that in focus, you have to revisit them because your life will change. Mm-hmm. Like my values, my, my 15 values are definitely different today than they were 10 years ago when I very first did this exercise. And the, the top three have shifted around. So I've always had um, freedom as a value and, I, you know, uh, connection has usually been in there because that's kind of what I do. But, you know, family, the word means different things at different times. And so that sort of moved in and out. Uh, And so, like, I think it's really important that you revisit that, which means you've got to pause, right? You've got to pause and you've got to stop. And we know some really cool people. And I'm sure that we would both agree those really cool business people are always doing something to improve themselves. They're at programs, courses, reading books, listening to podcasts. Absolutely. For me personally, for a very long time through life, I went, hmm, what is my purpose? Uh What was I put on this planet to do? I know I wasn't born to be a conveyancer. So (laughs) what exactly is it? And I felt for such a long time, I was kind of like sifting through the weeds to try and find the purpose, thinking it was a thing that I could touch and feel and grab on. So I've If I'm feeling that way, I'm assuming there's going to be others that are too. So do you have any advice for people in terms of them searching for their purpose? And then how do you know when you've found it? 
Sparkotype is one of my absolute favourite business tools mm. and it was designed by uh, Jonathan Fields who wrote the, the amazing book, How to Live a Good Life. Great book and I, I love Jonathan. He's an amazing human. He uh, has a great podcast. Not that you should be jumping off this podcast to listen to that podcast. You support all there is enough food. You should finish this podcast and subscribe. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but he's, he also has a, a, a great uh, podcast and he, in, he came up with this way of working out what we do in our lives that lifts us up. So Sparkotype is really what floats your boat effectively, yeah. what lights you what up, lights you what up. Makes, mm-hmm. yeah, what makes you really happy. So there's 10 Sparkotypes. So there are the maker, which is people who are driven to create stuff. There's the scientists who are uh, people who are driven to solve stuff. There's the maven who are um, really just, they live to learn stuff. There's the essentialist and they're driven to really distill information to make sense out of it. Then there's the performer who like to perform. I don't think I'd be a performer, would you? <laughs> and there's, there's the warrior and they're people who are driven to lead. Um, then there's the sage and they're driven to teach. And there's the advocate who are driven to advocate for other people and the advisor who are driven to guide people and finally the nurturer and obviously they're they're there to give care so it's a really beautiful model and what happens when you do this the assessment is that we'll give you your primary sparkotype and a secondary sparkotype an anti-sparkotype and what I love about this model is it's not going to tell you to go and be a doctor or a lawyer or an electrician. It's going to tell you what lights up your life, right? So your primary sparkotype is the thing that enlivens you the most. And your secondary sparkotype is the stuff that you do to support your primary sparkotype. And your anti-sparkotype is the stuff that really drains you the most. Now, you nailed it before when I m- made that comment about life's too short to do stuff we don't like, because we've all got to do stuff we don't like in life, because there's always going to be stuff take out the garbage mow the lawn whatever we're all going to do stuff because we live and you know stuff has to happen but when you know so for me the scientist is my anti sparkotype so anything to do with um solving stuff and process like that ain't my my jam so i know that that's not my thing so you know if as much as i can i i would get somebody else to do that aspect Mm. of my business for me Um, and you know I have a really great operations manager in my business because she's the opposite to me she just Mm. loves solving problems I'm like thank you very much it's great to have you here you can go solve that so for me uh, really uh, I love to teach so the sage is my secondary spark type Mm. so I like sharing knowledge because I believe that I'm in a very privileged position that I got to where I am and I have knowledge to share and I think it's incumbent upon me to share that. And I love performing. So you don't have to be an actor. Like, you know, I love being on a, on a stage doing a keynote presentation. You know, it's a good way of feeding my ego in a healthy way. You know, it's a great way to have that result. So it, I would say do the Spark Type, S-P-A-R-K-E-T-Y-P-E.com. It's free. You get a free report. You can pay 20 bucks and get a deep one, but you don't need to. Just get yeah. the free one. Uh, and really understand what lights you up. Then when you understand what lights you up, you can look at the parts of your business or your life and say, well, this is, this is lighting me up and this doesn't light me up. How can I do more of this? Mm-hmm. And then sometimes, just like you said before, we're in um, jobs or, or businesses that simply can't meet what lights us up and sometimes we just have to pay the rent right you know when I was at university I I waited tables you know I had to pay the rent so I did stuff I wouldn't choose to do but that's life but then you know that that's not going to be where you get lifted up so you have to find what lifts you up somewhere else so Mm -hmm. understanding what lights you up you find it from wherever you can and sometimes you've just got to do your work to support what makes lights you up so if you're an artist and you're you know a, a barista a job. yeah well you know if you, you you can you either find it in your job or you go okay this is a means to an end so i can spend 16 hours on the weekend painting right Absolutely. and then that then you go oh okay that's my purpose so really understanding i think what lights you up and what brings you joy in your life mm-hmm. is a really great place to start once you understand that then I think things start falling into place a lot more clearly. And when you give yourself space to think about that, the universe has a really, really, really sneaky little way of giving the answers, right? 
It really does, doesn't it? Because the universe knows when you, you when you're asking questions, mm, right? Hundred percent. Yeah. So interesting. Just sitting here listening to all of this, I remember very clearly what mine were, and I was the sage, and the secondary was warrior. Oh yes, you were. Isn't it interesting what I'm doing now? Oh <laughs> yes. I hadn't thought about that. Away from my desk and yeah. teaching and leading. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So look, I, I get so mm. many people that I know I get to do this because I have had so many of my friends and business colleagues just say thank you so much for getting me onto this. I wish I'd have invented it, but I didn't. But you know, it's been a really powerful tool for me. It really helped me understand how to navigate my business in a way that made sense for me. So that's when I employed an operations manager because I knew that was dragging me down. And I, I couldn't afford it. It was a lot of money for me. It was really financially angst making, mm -hmm. but I made it happen. And then it created space for me to do things that Which really, yeah, really enabled me to make my, I wouldn't be doing, I wouldn't be on stage doing keynote speaking today if I hadn't brought the ops manager in and an area manager in to do all the stuff that, you know, I, I didn't want to do. Mm, and, absolutely. you know, having having a team of a team of VAs that helped me. 10 years ago, I would have been too scared to have done that. Mm, absolutely. It's so incredible. I've loved watching the expansion of journey <laughs> because I'm, hey, I'm still in it. Don't worry. <laughs> I will, but you never stop, right? Like that, No, absolutely. It, that, that I, you know, somebody said to me, oh, when you... When you <laughs> It's so funny. My dad was actually my dad. He's when are you going to stop doing all this new stuff? I said, Dad, never. Yeah. I'm like 57. Like I'm, I'm young. Yeah, absolutely. And you're, and you're 91. I've got a long way to go if I'm going to get to your age. I don't want to have fun getting there. Yeah, and life should be fun. Yeah. Really, should be. It should be fun, and it should be simplistic. Simpsons. And we are very, very great, gracious in this world that we have things like this that can give us a little bit of clarity to find the path mm -hmm. forwards. And I, I love the fact that I have done this and <laughs> I'm now doing exactly what my sparker type said that I would do. So. So cool. Well, you know, what came first, the chicken or the egg? You're like you knew this, you, but it gave you the language mm. to, in your head to navigate the journey so that mm. you went, oh, okay, so this is important to me. This is what lights me up. So what can I do to support mm. that more? And so that's exactly what you've, you've gone and done. Yeah, absolutely. And it, and it was partnered with, like you did in your business, what am I great at in my business? What am I creating a chokehold on in the business? Mm. Because it's not my skill set or it's not my you know number one passion. And then how do I bring the right people in to support me in those areas? So I can keep doing the things that I really, truly am good at and support mm. the business. Because I tell you what, the day that I learned that I was the biggest problem in the business <laughs> was the day that the business, I swear to God, we doubled overnight. <laughs> Do you know, there's a real, for your listeners, there's a really cool way of doing this. It's like get out a blank piece of paper and put a organization chart of your business there of every single thing right down to who cleans the loos if you've got a premises to who takes out the garbage but everything marketing sales you know answering the phone what whatever the roles are and fill all of those positions up and then put your name under every single one of them and then your job over time is to cross your name off from each of those boxes to the point where you're doing the thing all the things that it has the best return on your time in your business. Absolutely. Okay. And I might just start like with uh, sending something off to Fiverr to get a small task done, like getting you, uh, if you don't want to do your Instagram creative, send it off to Fiverr. It might cost you, you know, 20 bucks to get a week, a month's worth of uh, Instagram posts done. But if that's not your jam, get someone else to do it for 20 bucks, job done. Then yeah. you can say social media um, graphics, that's that task taken off from somebody else. And maybe at first you still have to post them, but then the next step might be and then hire somebody for, through Fiverr or, uh, you know, an outsourced uh, service like that. I wasn't plugging Fiverr, but uh, you know, <laughs> I, I, I've used Fiverr. I love it. And um, I think there's Upworks. That's easy, easy to find people. You don't have to hire people full time. You can get mm. people to do very task specific things. So I start crossing off your box. And when you start crossing those boxes off on your org chart, it is so gratifying. It's like, oh my, oh my gosh, this. I've taken that off my task list. It makes you feel good, right? Yeah, absolutely. Because that's the that's the aim, right? Yeah. <laughs> we yeah. shouldn't be doing everything all the right. time. And yeah. when we we when we tick off those little boxes, 
that creates momentum. Totally, totally. Mm -hmm. oh, I love it. <laughs> and all right, so let's go through the other two. We've got the intention and the value. So how do we figure out what our intention is? Is that down to a gut instinct or where do you, where does that sit for you? Um, look, it is a gut instinct. You, you really know where you want to go. How do you want to get there? You know, it, if something doesn't feel right, you just are not going to do it. So mm -hmm. I, I really believe that we have, if we give ourselves space and it's asking questions, mm -hmm. questions is the, is the most powerful part of this. So ask yourself questions, mm -hmm. ask yourself the hard questions. You know, how is it that I want to go there? What is, what is the way that I'm going to get there in that intentional, intentional way? You know, how do I communicate that to people in an intentional way? If it doesn't feel right, it's not right. Yeah. And then I guess too, like from a really simplistic state, it's like, is my intention pure or is my intention to shortcut cut someone else down, sabotage, whatever yeah. it might be, you go, oh, is that in the best alignment of, of who I am as a human and in yeah. the outcome? So the intention is never, never about money. So, so often mm -hmm. when I talk to people about this, they make it about money. Right. Money is the result of getting all this right, okay? Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. like, I've been there, I, you know, I, I'm still a human. I kind of still say that to myself, oh, I want to get this financial goal. But I think I've learned over the years that financial outcomes are really the result of understanding why. So, you know, what's important to me? Uh, how am I going to get there? How can I help other people? And what problem I, am, am I solving for them? And how do I do that in a way that's right for me? Yeah, it's really Am I doing this online? Am I doing this in person? Am I, you know, whatever. Yeah, this yeah. is really simple questions. Just, I just really, questions. I love that though, because it's like we're doing, we're running a business or we're working for a company or, you know, we're, we're doing what we're doing with majority of our time. Yeah. Because we're either really good at something, we love giving what, you know, the service or the product or whatever yeah. it might be, or we have something to solve a problem. Yeah. So when we're doing that, the intention behind doing that, is to fill a need or fill a service or help a customer or something like that. The financial reward is like the cherry on top. It's like if we do this with clear intention. Yeah. And you know when people are intentional and their intention is good, they always seem to make the most amount of money, right? Mm -hmm. It just seems yeah. to flow that way. I, I've seen it so many times that people who are financially free or also really clear about what they're doing and why and you know every business is there you said it before to solve a problem you know you're solving a problem and when you've got all those things together that that three together you know you bring your tribe along because they will follow you to the end of the earth and you know here's the, here's the thing not everyone's going to like what you're doing not everyone's going to like your purpose or intention not everyone's going to share your values no worries no problem, because there's a whole bunch of people that will and they'll love you and they'll follow you forever and a day and they'll stay with you and they'll support you because you're aligned to what's important to them. Absolutely. And something that really rang true for me a little while ago now after reading a book by Napoleon Hill called <laughs> Think and Grow Rich, yes. and he speaks into it. It's a very, very old written book. But the, the biggest thing for me in that was that you must be prepared to give yeah. just as much as you receive yeah. because if we're not coming at this from an intention of how can I serve yep. how, what is my contribution and how do I give back if the intention is always about receiving and taking you're not going to get you're, you're going to be hitting that magnet yeah, in the opposite always. direction always. so if we're coming at it from a state of intentional contribution intentional service yeah. and being willing to part with that amount of money to, in order to receive that amount of money and then give it away, the intention is pure. And I did do a goal setting exercise based on that book and mm -hmm. how that book explained to do it. I went through the process. It took me about a week to do it. Yeah. And I did it, stuck it up on my door, I looked up yeah. next to my mirror, I looked at it every day. And within three months, yeah. I promise you, I was able to cross off half that list of things that I did not even think would exist. And it was remarkable. So if anyone's wanting to do goal setting. <laughs> well, it is, it is really the foundational book on self improvement, right? It's that was the very that was the foundational book. And my mentor got me onto that. And I'd actually read it probably 30 years ago. And I thought, oh, this is a bit weird. I didn't really get it then. <laughs> but I do remember that I was driving up uh from i'd come to a yoga retreat in cairns and i was driving up to the northern beaches and i had a they upgraded me to a convertible car and i thought to myself as i was driving up there i thought oh it'd be so cool to live here one day and guess what i live oh. here now 
<laughs> and that was like that was a trip I read that book. Wow. But you know, the brain is so powerful because mm-hmm. you can do stuff that you, you plant yeah. a seed in there. You know, that's why it's really important you don't plant seeds that are negative, like busy. You plant healthy, positive seeds like that because the brain will act on it. Well, I had the same situation. When I came to Queensland in January of 2021, I sat at a cafe right next to a school in Budrum in Sunshine Coast. And I said to my girlfriend, I was like, I could totally see myself taking my kids to this school and living here. (laughs) And then by September 2021, where did I move? To Budrum. What school did my kids go? Budrum Primary. I didn't even know what the town was called when I was sitting oh, there. That's so cool. <laughs> so cool. Amazing. I think I touched on it before, but I really want to emphasize it that, you know, questions, asking yourself questions, asking yourself honest questions about uh, what you want and how you want it is mm. the best way to achieve anything. Too often, we don't ask ourselves questions and we don't ask questions of others as well. The more questions you ask, the, the better your life is going to be because questions are really powerful ways of getting your brain to move. I love it. I, I ask myself questions all the time. Mm, yeah, the word curious is my favourite word. Yeah, Don't yeah. take anything as gospel. Be yeah. curious about everything. 100%. Yeah. And question the questions. Just yeah. allow your brain to explore. And I know for me, being a, a little bit of a control freak, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> a little bit of a perfectionist, a little bit OCD. The idea of asking my questions questions was like, oh, gosh, don't do not do that. That's too confusing. <laughs> <laughs> my, my mentor says to me all the time, what's the question behind the question? <laughs> <laughs> what's the intention behind the questions? No, question? right? That intention, right? <laughs> Oh, I love that. And look, the beauty of this as well is, you know, in, in I have been in absolute privilege of being able to witness your presentations. I've been in your workshops as well. <laughs> being able to sit in these spaces, create time, create the pause and come back to really asking pointed questions. Yeah. I feel as though is, it, gosh, it's, it's it changed my world. I was very, mm-hmm. very blessed to be able to experience it. And and the gift that you are now giving forwards is, is offering that as an opportunity for others. Mm. Well, thank you. You know, like I love keynote presenting because it, you know, my performer in me, I love being on stage and I like sharing the knowledge that I have. And I think I've learned some really cool stuff. And you, you know, definitely I, have. I have. And I'm it, I know it's not lost on me that not everyone has had the opportunity that I have had in business and in life to have these experiences. And I think you know, it's important that we share our knowledge and our skills and help other people and lift everyone up. You know, the best way to make yourself feel good is do something good for somebody else. Absolutely. And I would never forget, and I've been waiting for the minute that I could bring this up in the podcast, (laughs) is the fact that I at the time I was like, what's this crazy man doing? But you used to do laughing yoga. (laughs) Well, I still do. (laughs) Yeah, well, it's the cool. Who thought, who knew laughing yoga was a thing? Yeah, who doesn't need to laugh more? Definitely need to laugh more. I just, at that point in my life, I was like, yoga, laughing in front of a room of strangers. I don't know. Now I'm like, bring it on. People assume it's asana, like the, the poses. It's not. I mean, there is a little bit of movement, but you can do it in your work clothes. But it's really about learning how to laugh for no reason at all, because you don't have jokes at it, which is really just sending your body into a, uh, a really different state. And once you do that for 20 minutes, the science is really clear. You change your physiology. And the brain cannot tell between fake laughing and real laughing. It does not know. So you yeah. laugh for 20 minutes, it thinks you're happy and it's an antidote for whatever's going on. What a way so to counterbalance busyness. Yes. Laugh in the shower. That's my favourite thing. Oh, See, I've always been told to make a sad face and cry in the shower. Oh, I don't like that. Why Get it out. <laughs> oh, no, no. Cry, laugh, laugh, laugh. Laugh instead, uh, Kiara. Laugh, laugh, happy laugh, laugh, laugh. Happy is better. But it's a lot easier to be happy than to be sad. It takes less energy to be happy. It just it does. Really does. It, it really takes does. less muscles in your face to smile than it does to frown and just just on that too for anyone um braith and i did sit down a few years ago now actually it was during covid and did an interview online under my sessions of encounters so if anyone is interested in hearing a bit of Braith's story which was a really beautiful vulnerable story to share with me and again privilege um but you can find that on my website as well under the encounter sections 
I'm going to have to wrap it up and I'm really, really sad. So I'm sure we're going to do another one of these. But oh, can you cool. please, as well as being able to book Grace as a keynote speaker, you can go to his website for that. But what's the website? Where do we find you? You're huge <laughs> on socials as well. So follow him. <laughs> him. Well, I'd love to say that it's me posting it all, but you know, that's one of the things that I learned I can outsource. So Delegation. I, I have I have a great team that does all that. So I'm not on there doing it as much as you might think I am. But and I've learned to batch stuff as well. So I I batch it all and then it's all done for a couple of months. Okay. But uh, so you can find me at braithbamkin.com or you can find me at braithbamkin on LinkedIn or Facebook. It's a very easy name. But mm -hmm. on my website, there's a bucket of free stuff. I love to give away free stuff because it makes me happy to do that. And and I, I love sharing my knowledge. And then people go, oh, this guy knows what he's talking about. Let's book him as a keynote. So I'm available for keynotes. Amazing. And you will not be disappointed. You'll walk away with so much. <laughs> you will definitely laugh. <laughs> uh, and you, may there, even, you may even take a pause. To <laughs> Beautiful. Thank you so much for coming oh, on. It's been an you. absolute pleasure. And thank you all for tuning in once again to the She Can Humanize Business podcast. You can find us on all the social platforms, all the podcast platforms, and you can find me, Kiani Mills, on everywhere. <laughs> you know the drill, gang. And as Bryce said before, please subscribe and follow and uh, be ready for the next up and coming guests. Thank you all and have an incredible day. Bye. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode. I would love to hear your feedback around what resonated and what key lessons and learnings that you took out of today's episode. You can find me on Instagram and on LinkedIn under the She Can Humanize Business podcast or Kiani Mills. I really hope that you were able to see, feel and experience a new way of humanizing business.